Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a rubric question type within book widgets. This is a new question type, so you will have to choose for a worksheet, a quiz or a split worksheet. So I click on the worksheet when I create a new widget. And then of course it is a question type. So here I add a question and then I can choose for a rubric question type right here. So there are a few ways to use this question type. You can, for example, create a complete quiz first or a worksheet with different question types in your assignment. And at the bottom of your assignment, you will add a rubric question type so students can scale themselves and reflect on their learning on the assignment they just got. This question type, and it's really important to know, is a question type for both students and for teachers. So students can use this question type to really think about what goals they have to reach and what criteria the teacher has. And on the other side, teachers can use this to scale the student. So they will receive the feedback of the student on how they will scale themselves. And as a teacher, you can override that and you can also indicate what you want. That part we will see in the next video. But first, of course, I will show you how to create a rubric. So the first thing I do is click on a rubric and in this kind of worksheet I will just create a rubric. So it's a rubric that I can use for different kinds of presentation with always the same rubric and criteria my students have to uh, get on the assignment. So I will add my question right here and then I will add my rubric here. Here you go. My question is indicate how you think you did during this presentation. Your teacher will do the same using these criteria. Let's create the rubric itself. So here is the rubric and here you can do a few things. The first thing of course is adding your criterion. Um, these are the things students will have to be able to do during this assignment. And then of course you have to add the scale as well. So in this case, the scale is already filled out, an excellent, a good, fair or poor job. And you have to add the description. So for this criteria, this is how the student did to get an excellent. So you really have to fill out the description so students know where they can go if they have like, a, if they did a poor job, what they have to do to get to the excellent job right here. There are a few things you can do here. First, you can start adding criterions. So just click on the plus to make your rubric a little bit bigger. What you also can do here is make it smaller or even bigger. So if you want to scale from one to five, you can do that as well. You can add, click on the plus right here, or you can delete uh, one of the scales right here. So maybe just delete one this here, and then we have excellent, maybe okay, or intermediates, and so on. The other thing you can do is change grades. So these are grades given automatically when you indicate something right here. If you're grading it for your students, these are the grades that students will get. This is interesting that you can change it, but your students will not see the grade at all. So if you really want to, to use this as a summative exercise, a summative assignment, and you want to show your students how what grade they will get, for example, let's do three here, two here, one here, then you could add it in the title and then your students will see in how many points, how many points they will get right here. You can also add a custom score that deviates from the default. So uh, it would be interesting if for some, if it's intermediate, it just doesn't exist. It's just good or it's bad. So you might add a zero right here and then this score will override the two right here. Let's start filling out our exercise. Here it is, here is my rubric. I filled out everything. You can also see that one thing here is inapplicable. So that is a presentation is delivered within the specified time limit. Of course, my um, students go over time or they meet the specified time limit. When I go down, 
I can add some different things. So I can add a rationale, an explanation. I can add a hint, audio, image, numbering. And this is the most important one, correction and scoring options. So this question has grading and correction. So this means that the scores that you gave here on the rubric will of course count as when the teacher, when the student indicates something and when the student, when the teacher overrides it, they will count. If you want to use this question type solely for a formative assessment, you could say that it doesn't matter so that the question is not created and corrected and then of course still later on as a teacher you can still choose um, the right boxes here you can still indicate the right criterion right here um, and students will see it as a formative assessment so they will immediately see what they have to do to do better next time in the next presentation without showing a score in this case, I am going to add this as a graded and corrected question. And then of course, I'm going to preview to show you how this looks like for my students. So here you go. This is the rubric and my students can scale themselves. So they can reflect on their presentation themselves and then they can just indicate um, what did go well, what did go midi, intermediate and so on. Just like this, when the students are done, they submit their rubric and then you as a teacher can take a look at it in your reporting dashboard. And that's something I will show you in the next video, but this is just how to create a rubric question type. There are more rubrics to create. So this is of course the setup of a rubric within book widgets, uh, but you can make some changes. This is an, an analytic rubric. You can also create holistic rubrics. You can also create uh, checklist rubrics. Make sure to take a look in the blog post that I shared with you in the via the link in the description to see everything you can do right here with a rubric inside book widgets. We've also added ready to use examples. Um, you can just copy within your account and start maybe changing some things and then use yourself. Before I go to the next video, I really want to show you the design option right here. So when you're in your student view, click on design and the design of the rubric is always based on the color you choose in book widgets here. So if you choose enough a different color, your rubric will of course um, yeah, switch from color as well. You can also play with the dark and light background right here and then you will see that also this will change. I am a fan of the light backgrounds and I don't spend that much time on creating my rubric and designing it. Um, I don't want to spend much time, so I'll just keep it in the blue, in the book widgets blue. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope you now know how to create a rubric for your students and also for the teacher and that I will show you in the next video. Goodbye.